In this video, we're going to look at seed plants or plants that produce seeds. And I gave two representative samples here. It doesn't mean these are the only two. In this case, this would be the dandelion and the pine tree. So the evolution of seed plants. The seed is a critical adaptation to life on land because it protects the embryonic plant when it is at its most vulnerable stage of its life. Seed plants produce two kinds of gametophytes, male and female, which develop completely within the sporophyte. The male gametophyte is called the pollen grains, and this gives rise to the microspores. The female gametophyte contains the egg within the ovule, and this develops into the megaspore. Kind of a way to try to remember this is you can think of like a sperm and an egg. The sperm is very small in comparison to the egg. And the sperm in this case represents the pollen, and that's the male portion, that's a very small region. And the egg or the ovules, the megaspore here, it's much larger in comparison in size. So evolution of seed plants, all seed plants are derived from a single common ancestor, and there's two main branch points here. We have gymnosperms and angiosperms. So gymnosperms, the ovules are not completely enclosed by the sporophyte tissue at the time of pollination. It's evident by our pine cone here. Microscopic uh, female gametophyte N is inside the ovulate cone. And microscopic male gametophyte N inside the pollen cone here also. So you see if you look very carefully at uh, pine trees, they yes, they have the cones, they also produce um, these male um, microspores here, which is containing the pollen. Angiosperms, in the other case here, are ones that produce flowers. They most recently evolved. The ovules are completely enclosed in the sporophyte tissue uh, called the carpal, and this is at the time of pollination. And they're the ones producing the true flowers here. Microscopic female gametophyte and inside the parts of the flower, and the microscopic male gametophytes inside these flower parts here. And this is again the sporophyte, the 2N, and the pollen in, is the N along with the egg. So what is the seed, the evolution of the seed? The seed has three visible parts to it. The endosperm is a source of food that, develop, that the developing embryo needs. In some seeds, the endosperm is used up by the embryo and stored as food in structures called cotyledons. We're going to talk about monocots and dicots. Dicot meaning di meaning two. There's basically two seed leaves, monocot meaning one seed leaf. The embryo is the simple, small, little plantlet. Um, and that's just kind of what's going to house the genetic information that's going to develop into the full size plant. And the coat is a drought resistance protective layer. And that's the outside here. So we see the comparison between a bean seed and the corn seed. And I will have another video that describes monocots and dicots and be able to further understand the difference between the two. But right now, just looking at the seeds, you see they have a lot of the same parts. The key difference here is the cotyledon. We have cotyledon here pointing to two, meaning dicots, two seed leaves in this bean seed. And the cotyledon in the corn is only one. So benefits of seeds? Well, seeds offer a lot of benefits to plants. Dispersal is one. Uh, facilitates the migration to new habitats. See here by the wind carrying new seeds of the dandelion. Dormancy. This permits plants to delay the, the development until conditions are favorable. A plant doesn't necessarily want to germinate in the fall. It's not going to be able to tolerate the harsh winter, particularly here in New England. Germination controls when the plant develops so that it can be synchronized with critical aspects of the plant's habitat. Plants may want to time the germination and delay their dormancy so when it's most favorable for them to actually grow. In nourishment, seeds provide nourishment of the young plant during the critical period just after germination, as we see here. So relating to dormancy and germination, this um, young seedling here may want to wait till the spring when the larger trees um, and shade that it might be around it aren't fully developed yet. It is getting some nutrients here to allow it to fully expand its leaves before it starts making its own um, sugars from the sun. Improved seed dispersal is fruits. Fruits are a great way plants have developed to be able to dis disperse their seeds. A mature ovary surrounds the ovule, becomes all or part of the fruit. In our angiosperms, again our flower producing plants, they use fruits to induce animals to disperse the seeds. Although eaten by animals, the seeds within the fruit are resistant to chewing and digestion. They pass out of the animal in the feces, ready to germinate at a new location far from the plant.
This is why typically farmers may add manure to their fields uh, because it helps plants grow. This could be a potential reason why that occurs is plants are used to being able to pass through the digestive system and then grow in fertile manure. Some fruits are dispersed by wind or water. See here the coconut by water and our dandelion again by wind. But just because a bird comes through and picks up a, a berry here doesn't mean it's a bad thing for the plant. Um, it's being dispersed to different regions. Us um, watermelons may take them to picnics and the monkeys and the squirrels here, ways to disperse things. Also, um, seeds can kind of attach themselves, in this case physically, um, to clothing or other animals through these burrs and be dispersed that way. All these are ways that plants have evolved to help increase their ability to disperse their seeds and take over and be introduced to new locations.